Okay, so in this video, we want to discuss how to find the area below a curve. So, suppose that we have the graph of a function and for argument's sake, we'll assume that the function is positive over the given interval. So suppose the function is, let's say, increasing concave up. Suppose it looks like this and the interval goes from A to B. This is y equals f of x, our given function. And the question we're going to ask is the following. If you look at the region below the curve y equals f of x between x equals a and x equals b, and bounded below by the x-axis, we are going to ask simply, what is the area of this region? And we want to find the exact area. So the question is, how do we calculate this? And the idea is to approximate the region by a sequence of rectangles that are getting narrower and narrower. So let's see what if we approximate the region by a single rectangle? So let me reproduce the sketch. This was y equals f of x, our curve. And now, Suppose we look at this region and we look at the interval AB as the base of a large rectangle. And we'll take the right hand point, so again this is the curve y equals f of x. We will take the right hand point of the interval to give us the height of our rectangle. So now suppose we draw a rectangle over the whole interval AB where the height of the rectangle is f of b. Well, if you look at the area of this rectangle, you see that it's not going to give us the exact area below the curve. We have too much, but it's an approximation. So the area of this large rectangle is approximately the area below the curve, the exact area that we are trying to find. Well, you may think, well, if one rectangle is not so great, what if we subdivide the interval from A to B into two intervals, and instead of taking one large rectangle, we take two smaller ones. Will this be more interesting? So we subdivide AB into two intervals, and now we will construct two rectangles, one for each interval, and we'll take the height of the rectangle to be the value of the function at the right end point. So let's construct this rectangle first. And then our second rectangle from A to the midpoint of AB. Again, the height will be the value of the function at this point. And now, let's add the area of both rectangles. Well, what do you notice? Once again, it looks like we have too much area than the exact area below the curve, but it looks like we're doing better, right? We're going to have too much area, but not as bad as the single rectangle case. So it, it looks like as we went from one rectangle to two, we will have a better approximation to the exact area below the curve. And then you see where this is going. Why stop at two rectangles? Why not subdivide, again, 
each interval into two subintervals and now go with four rectangles. First subdivision into a half, and the other two subdivisions into also halves. And now again, let's construct for each interval a rectangle whose height will be given by the value of the function at the right end point. So let's begin with b. Then with this interval, right end point again, right end point again, and right end point again. And now we will again add the area of each rectangle. And you see that once again we will not have the exact area below the curve. We'll have a little too much. But it looks like this approximate area by adding up the area of these four rectangles is getting closer to the exact area, right? It looks like we're doing even better than we were with two rectangles. To really make the picture even better, we'll go one step further. This will be our last step. What if we now go from four rectangles into eight rectangles? Subdivide each interval into two equal intervals. I'll put it here. So you can really compare from 1 to 2 to 4 and then now to 8. So if we go from A to B, Our curve y equals f of x. All right, so we want to have eight intervals, so first in half, then again each in half, and now each one also divided into two intervals of equal length. And now for each interval again, we will construct a rectangle whose height is given by the value of the function at the right end point. So let's begin with f of b. Again, second interval, value of the function at the right end point. We keep going like this. And now once again, to approximate the area, the exact area below the curve, we will add the area of each rectangle. So area of the first plus area of the second plus the third plus the fourth plus the fifth plus the sixth, the seventh, and finally the eighth rectangle. And there's no denying again that from the picture it should be clear that this approximate area is even better than the one with four rectangles. So now we are left with two questions. The first, with a finite number of rectangles from two to four to eight, will we ever get the exact area below the curve? And the answer is no, at least for this curve, we see that we'll always get a little too much. But it is clear from the picture that as we have more and more rectangles, what's too much will be shrinking hopefully to zero. And that's the whole idea. So 
we have to take more and more and more rectangles, but we can never stop with a finite number of rectangles. So to obtain the exact area below the curve y equals f of x, using the idea of areas of rectangles, we have to let the number of rectangles approach infinity. And that's the whole idea. So if we let n be the number of rectangles used, then we get the feeling that as n goes to infinity, we will obtain the exact area. And this is the crux of the argument, and how to find the area below any given curve. Now, we are left with now two other questions. So we understand that we must take more and more rectangles to get a better and better approximate area under the curve. And then we have to let n go to infinity to obtain the exact area. So two things. First, how do we set this up properly? How do we subdivide systematically any interval from A to B into n equal intervals to give us n rectangles? And how do we evaluate systematically again the area of each rectangle and how do we add them up? And then how do we let n go to infinity? This will give us the exact area and this will be the topic of our next video. How to set up these sum of areas of rectangles systematically for any interval AB and any function f of x.